And welcome back to the channel, everybody. Welcome back to a new video. And today, I'm going to talk about Stellantis. They had their Q2 earnings call. Now, what I'm wondering, and I'm sure you all are, probably not, but maybe you will be interested in this, is how did they do with Carlos Tavares's plan, the man who got paid $39 million, his plan to convert this company to Stellantis's vision, to selling mostly EVs and things like the Hornets and economical things and to go down the, the green way. And is that working out for him? And how is this whole transition going and how is it affecting the financials of the company? Well, I will just preface this with, it's okay for the company. They have lots of cash and they still make lots of money. So the quick, the quick answer is they still made a lot of money. They're still very profitable and Carlos, so far, is still in a job, but the shareholders are getting killed. They're getting killed right now. So we're looking at, and I'll just go to my computer desktop and we will talk about kind of the metrics on this and what's really taking place and how this affects people. But the shareholders are getting walloped right now. And the shareholders have, have an opportunity to decide, now, do I want to ride Stellantis into the sunset and is it going to be a fun place or is it going to be a financially painful place? Well, it always seems like the people that are up there in the clouds, in the in the C-suites, the, the big brilliant college kids, that they don't look at the same things that we look at on the ground. And then they're always shocked when things don't work out. It's like an earnings call day where we all knew this last three months because we ain't buying cars. We're not going to the car dealership and paying the stupid prices they're asking. We know that, so we don't need an earnings call to know that it's not good for them. We also know that we're not really excited about the whole EV thing. We think there's a place for it, and there's people out there that are gonna love it, but it's a small fraction of the vast market that these companies, especially Stellantis, need to be playing in. And they're choosing to play in the smallest possible market with the minority of characters out there willing to drive one of these EV things and it's led to now with all the retooling and all the cutting of expenses and all the decisions pretty much that Carlos Tavares has made has led to almost 30 billion dollars in market cap and let me just show you this we're gonna go to my desktop and I'm gonna give you the breakdown on this thing and you can share it you could talk about it with people and I think in the end it pretty much is easy for us to surmise that they're gonna stay on the horrible path that they're on and there's probably no hope. There probably is no chance they're going to wake up in time, but there is a chance that Dodge comes back strong someday. There's little indication, we'll talk about that in a second, with something Tavares did say on the call and that we could probably predict the future better than the college kids. No offense if you're a college kid, I just didn't get to go. I went in the military instead. So I applaud the fact that you went, my daughter will go. But right now we're dealing with really smart guys, those RSGs out there that are making decisions and not listening to us on the ground who are saying, I just wanna drive something that makes a lot of noise and is a lot of fun to cruise around in. I don't need something that plugs into my wall. But now let's jump over to my other screen. All right, so while we're looking at this page here, what we've got is the market capitalization history. And this goes back to when Stellantis was founded and Carlos came in and, and they were selling all these gas cars. You can see all this coming up, the run up, and things were good. And then who knows what happened here, but then it went down. And, you know, if we look back at, you know, 16, 17, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, I mean, we can go back in history and figure that out. But as we cruise along, and we get closer and closer. We go through some uh, crazy times. We start hitting the pandemic and then things go ballistic with the shortage and the ridiculous increase in prices on cars. And they start to raise prices. They start to torture us. And of course, what happens? Interest rates start getting stupid. We realize they announce that they're getting rid of the gas powered cars, they're going electric direction. We start getting mad. We don't want to play around with Stellantis. And Lord, I'm just, I'm just saying that stuff, but I'm not saying that's the reason why. But then they start coming back and things start to work out and they cut so much expense. They cut so many expenses that Wall Street loves them. And they end up going to a pretty great price of 
uh, or stock price that took their market cap to 87.91 billion dollars. That's huge. But that was based on, in my opinion, and by no means am I educated in this, but in Carlos saying we're going to cut expenses or we're going to jump into this new deal where we're going all electric and you should be excited and be part of this with us. Well, in the end, um, people who signed up for that are kicking themselves because look what started happening. And you see it going down, 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 down. And then you have July come up and he gets on there and announces that, well, we got walloped. We had almost a 50% drop in, uh, what was it, in revenue or and in profit. And while they still made some money, it's definitely a big, huge crash to their stock price. That equates to, if you look at 87.91 billion down to 59, it's like 28 or almost $30 billion. That is real money that that shareholders have, you know, have. Like, they own the stock, so they all took a cut today. And depending on where they bought it, if they bought it here, they're getting killed all the way down here. And what's the chances of it coming back up here where they can get their money back? Here's the definition of market cap, in case anybody doesn't know. Um, the total market value of a publicly traded company's outstanding shares, and it's commonly used to measure how much a company is worth. In real life, it's really not what a company is actually worth, because you nobody would really buy all the shares. You can buy some of the shares, a majority of the shares, and you can get control in companies. Go check TK's channel where he's talking about stuff like that, which would be pretty cool. But this, the reality of it is, is that's what it would, that's what people think it's worth. So now he took this huge hit, and now. He is in panic mode, meaning he's got to fix this problem. How's he going to fix this problem? Well, he's already cutting to the bone to cut expenses. Well, he's not pulling that off the table. He's going to keep cutting expenses. But now what do you do? Do you, you know, do you throw the baby out with the bathwater, as they say? Well, when we go to this recent article that came out today, is Stellantis ready to axe brands, ready to axe brands and fix U.S. problems. So in his earning call, which you can go to Seeking Alpha and you can actually listen. Of several headwinds that I will describe to you. Several headwinds he will describe to you. That's Carlos Tavares talking. So you can just type in Stellantis earnings call and Alpha, Seeking Alpha, and it'll come up and you can listen to the whole thing. Get an account for free and listen to it. But let's go back and look at this article where they make he makes the point in his earnings call that in a change of stance CEO says may axe unprofitable brands the problem is is that these brands don't report their own P&Ls to know what is unprofitable what isn't but there is one brand that I'll share with you in a second that they did share that we do have numbers on at least some indication which I would bet will be history soon and maybe sign of what's to come in the future because of the dumb decisions that they're making so let's talk about the company expects to launch 20 new models this is what he said in there the problem is is the vast majority of those models are things that people don't want and they're ridiculously overpriced so if you were gonna buy stock in this company while it's at a dip you have to gamble that this plan is going to work amongst all the other issues which he goes into. North America needs the most work. Now, in an article not that long ago, he took, Carlos took responsibility. And he shows up saying, okay, we're going to fix this. And he says he's sending engineers from Europe in to fix the, the you know, horrible American, you know, uh, plants and, and, you know, whatever. It may, basically making it sound like America is the one screwing everything up. But the reality of it is, if you look at reliability, if you look at all the recalls that have been going on at the cars in, the cars in America, it's like he's making uh, the American cars, the cars built in America, look like the worst ones, like they're bringing the company down. Yet, I don't know about you all, but Maserati, Fiat, Alfa Romeo have never, have never had a good reputation for quality and reliability. So for him to say, oh, he's going to fix things out here, he hasn't been able to fix things out there. I mean, they launched, of all things, a Fiat 500e that approaches almost $40,000 optioned up that's electric that gets like 150 miles of range. It's utterly ridiculous, and it seats two, two people and two 
um, small dogs in the back seat or small tiny children it's ridiculous for what what they want for it and then he wants to reduce north america output he said which means less cars because they have too much inventory but the problem is is the inventory they've got is quote old stuff inventory coming is their new stuff so how does he launch 20 new models and get rid of all the old stuff where there's two years of inventory in many cases of a lot of these cars. I don't know how he gets around this. So he, he says in, in one, in one re earnings report, he says, we're gonna launch 20 new models, but then he comes in here, re reduce North American output. Well, you have to get the 20 models out, but what if nobody buys the 20 models? Well, every single manufacturer is having trouble with electric vehicles and and ICE vehicles, but electric vehicles are, vehicles are really killing them. And new technology, if you read the Ford earnings report, they got killed on warranty costs because of new technology is what the CEO said. You think, and they're way ahead, way ahead of Stellantis when it comes to launching EV stuff with the Mach-E and all that fun stuff. I mean, look over here, look at Ford. They're, where is it, right here, I think. Oh, geez, where is it? Right here, Ford. Ford Model E, or Ford Model E is their electric platform, and blue is their ICE, their uh, engine platform, or their ICE platform. And look at 37% down. All I can say is maybe electric vehicles aren't the solution to the financial problem. But when you get through read, reading this, they want to, of course, um, look at which brands. And when they go through their 14 brands, they've also got Maserati. Fiat, Peugeot, and Jeep. Do they have a future? Well, let's go see what they say here. Carlos says, if they don't make money, we will shut them down. Carlos told reporters after the world's number four automaker, used to be number one, delivered worse than expected first half results, and its shares were down as much as 10%. That's the 30 billion or 20 billion I'm talking about. We cannot afford to have brands that do not make money. This is when a, when a CEO says this and they start being willing to throw the baby out with the bathwater rather than fix it. This is a company in, in my opinion, in crisis mode. Let's burn everything that's not making us money. Even though these things could easily make them money if he changed his direction and delivered cars that people wanted to buy. For example, much cheaper cars, more affordable cars that still had a margin, but could then drive volume to make up for the low margins and make profit. But instead, he wants to kill these things? Well, he's all, well, I'll tell you, I think what he's gonna kill, he's gonna kill right off the bat, if we go up here, he's gonna kill, here it is, Solantis does not release figures for individual brands, except for Maserati, which reported an $82 million euro the adjusted operating loss in the first half. Some analysts say Maserati could possibly be a target for, for a sale by Stellantis, while other brands such as Lancia or DS might be at risk of being scrapped given their marginal contribution to the group's overall sales. We can go on and on in this article, but I will tell you, let's go ahead and talk, let's go here. Let's just, let's just read this paragraph. A few automotive brands have been killed off since General Motors ditched the unprofitable Saturn and Pontiac during the U.S. government-led bankruptcy in the global financial crisis of 2008. Tavares is under pressure to revive flagging, mar or, yeah, flagging margins and sales and cut inventory in the United States as Stellantis bets on the launch of 20 new models this year, which it hopes will boost profitability. Recent poor results from global car makers have heightened worries about weakening outlook for sales across major markets such as the US, whilst they also juggle an expensive transition to electric vehicles and growing competition from cheaper Chinese rivals. So I'm not gonna read more of this, but I'll tell you, if we're talking about Maserati being the first one that's probably on the chopping block, I don't think any of us are gonna miss Maserati. It's an overpriced piece of junk, always has been. They're not an exotic car. People try to think they are. They have to lease these things at incredibly low prices just to be able to get rid of them, to, re to maintain them, to do brakes on them, to take care of them, or when they go out of warranty, it's so expensive, it's not even funny. So I think Maserati's likely dead to the world, and it was dead to the world before, and they brought it back, and they, they shortchanged everybody with cheap Dodge plastic products or uh, or materials inside these Maseratis 
such as the navigation from a Dodge, I think it was a Dodge Dart or something. Everything was cheap. The window controls, the stocks on the steering wheel, everything was came from Chrysler and Dodge. And it made that really expensive car not worth the money. And then people, any of my friends that owned them, it cost a fortune to keep them going. But that tells me that if Dodge continues to struggle, if Dodge continues to struggle and Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, they're gonna start either killing off those brands, but why would they? There is massive, massive value in those brands if they were to be sold off. And I gotta think that at some point, like Saturn, nobody was gonna really buy Saturn. I mean, Saturn, nobody cared about Saturn. Pontiac, it was kind of dying anyways. I mean, I, I loved some of the Pontiac stuff, but it was dying anyways. But Maserati, nobody's gonna miss that. But you can't just shut down Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, and Ram. As a matter of fact, if you try to split those up, it really causes a problem. So if he wanted to sell Chrysler and let's say Dodge, because Dodge can't get off the ground with their EV and their Hornet stuff, he's gonna have to probably let him have Jeep and Ram to go along with it to be able to sell that thing. And I gotta think, why wouldn't he turn it into cash, immediate cash, to, to shore up his financials and just get it back to an, uh, an American, American automaker or an American owner. And I gotta think that is probably what we're gonna see because I don't think there's any way in hell that Stellantis is going to turn that company around. But he believes they will, and we're gonna watch the disaster. And if I'm wrong, so be it, but I don't think he will. I don't think, uh, I, don't think I am. All right, here's the stock price, just to show you what happened today. Right here, 724 to 725, you watch that drop. I mean, this is a cliff. That he, that he fell off right here. And this is their earnings call. And while they're still profitable and they still have lots of money, it doesn't look like there's a lot of confidence in their plan. And all day it bounced around and got to a pretty pretty deep low of like $17 and 60, maybe 59 cents or something, bottom line. And then it just came up a little bit, but now it's just bouncing around here. Now, if it starts to go back up, that's gonna be completely because of the cuts that he'll start making because Wall Street likes to see a CEO cutting expenses because that's one way to achieve profitability and shore up the, the balance sheets and also create a longer, um, a better chance of, of surviving these kinds of beatings. But I think there's no way he can turn this thing around with the EV garbage that he's going to be pushing on us, especially with some changes that could take place with the elections. He's going to be sitting here going all in with his EV stuff and find out nobody wants to buy that stuff. And they're going to need, they're going to be like Fisker. They can't just shut down. Fisker could, they have one brand, but he can't just shut down Dodge. They would have to sell it so that all the people who bought the junk, that did buy the junk Dodge stuff and the Hornets and the, the new EV Daytonas and all that fun stuff and the Rams could service those things. So there's value there, obviously, for even the dealers. So that I don't think would go anywhere. But that's what happened with the stock price. And you can go read this article yourself, but it kind of gives the, the breakdown of the, the, the net profit. The net profit of $6 billion here, just 5.6 billion euros, down 48% from the same period last year. And that's how these companies like to report, not quarter over quarter, because they're counting a tracking a, a full year in progress. But if you go back to last year, they've dropped significantly. So they're down 48% from last year's first quarter, which is pretty nasty considering. And here you go. Uh, during its full year earning, full earnings report for the final six months, 2023, Stellantis said it made a net profit of 8.3 billion. So they're going, they're heading backwards right now and it's not gonna get better anytime soon. So that's a breakdown of Stellantis and the train wreck that they are. And I gotta think, if they, if they don't get rid of Carlos Tavares soon, he will continue to believe in his, his green agenda. He's gonna continue to push forward on his Dare Forward plan, and that could drive Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, and Ram into the ground so far that he has it follow Maserati and others that he's likely to cut. But in that case, I think he would need to sell them. So call me crazy, but the future will tell us what's going to happen. In the meantime, I, you know, I don't think any of us are going to be buying any of his stuff. If you watch my last video, I said I would buy a Banshee 
if they could beat the plaid and they could beat the range and all the metrics that they'd have to beat, you all know that will never happen. So I won't be buying one, which means only thing I'm buying is used stuff or old stuff on the lot still if I do buy anything else from Dodge in the future. And I think many of you feel the same way. We're not going to line up and I don't think enough people are going to line up to make that EV a success. Just look at the Hornet. That's not worked out. So with that, everybody, please like, subscribe, comment, share this video, and let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.